Now this is a perfect day to do some repotting of the bird's nest Sansevieria. Hi, it's Elise. I'm glad you stopped by the garden. About once a year or so, I go through my little pots of Sansevierias and I repot any that might need it. This is the bird's nest Sansevierias Hanai. H-A-H-N-I-I, -I. but I'll put the name up on the screen, the botanical name for you. Now there is a bird's nest fern, so don't get them confused. This is the bird's nest, bird's nest sansevieria, and I've tried to get into the habit of saying bird's nest sans, <laughs> but every so often I might slip and say bird's nest fern, but that is a completely different Plant. It's also called the friendship plant because it does put pups out that you can share with your friends. It's called the good luck plant because of the jade green color reminds you of money. Beautiful striations, variegation in the leaves. Grows very well in just about any condition. Dappled light, dappled sun, grow it outside in zones 9 through 11, maybe a warm 8, and it makes fantastic house plants. So, let's go ahead and take some of these apart and get started. They found one of these little plants on the, uh, I think it was a Laurenti Sansevieria that they found the dwarf plant on back in 1939 in New Orleans, Louisiana in the U.S. 1940 or 1941, a Mr. Han, H-A-H-N, applied for the patent. That's where we get the name Hanii. Look at the little baby coming out the side. Very hardy plants, low maintenance. They actually thrive on a little neglect if you forget to overwater or water them, that's fine. They don't like to be overwatered. So let's just tease this soil away a little bit, see what we have. Now I started these plants with one plant in it, in each pot. So all these plants are on one rhizome. So this will be the mother plant. This was probably the first pup that she put out the second pup, and now another one. So you can take your clippers, scissors, knife, go in here and separate this. I always like to separate mine. You don't have to, but I would strongly suggest you do. Go ahead, separate them out, give them a lots of room, especially if you want a perfect rosette. And they do grow on a rosette, and they grow from the middle. So I'm just going to come in here, I'll hold it at the bottom, and I'll just lightly twist it. And it usually just pops off where it wants to, <laughs> which that one didn't. If it doesn't, just take your clippers and go in and clip. Now I'm not going to take this baby off, because it's kind of small. I'm just going to leave it hooked on that rhizome. There's not much space between the rhizome and the other plant. And these are just judgment calls. The more of these you repot, the more you handle, the more you look at them, you'll decide then if that's what you want to do. Very nice. We're really dry right now. If these were wet, it would be pretty and shiny and green. All right, let's see about these. So this is the mother plant. She has a little damage. I think that's where something stepped on her. <laughs> Neighbor's dog, cat, something. Maybe a pot dropped on it. Here's a nice a little plant. Isn't that pretty? I love the striation. So as you're going through, you would plant one of these per pot. Now these make fantastic dish gardens, terrarium plants, because they don't get big. Fairy gardens, little creature gardens, tuck them in rock gardens, anything that you want to do. 
So while we're here, let's go ahead and open this one. They have a shallow root system. So when you're repotting, you don't need anything really deep. But you want a little something with some uh, width around it or some girth around it. And again, this was one plant that I put in here. So this great big one was the mother plant. And she has one, two, three, four babies. Wow. When they're really crowded together, what happens is they squeeze up and you don't get that perfect rosette. But it's up to you. It's a personal choice if you want to uh, let them grow all clumped together or divide them out. So when this is planted, what is going to happen is it's going to put new growth out from the center and this will start opening up and you'll get more of the rosette look. Isn't that pretty? Look at all that color. Sansevierias do pretty well in sun. Now I'm in zone 9B, so we have really, really hot afternoons in the summertime. So I have found if I get morning sun and afternoon shade, they work pretty well. If you've got them in too much sun, you can tell because they're going to start scalding off. And they'll start turning yellow turning brown around the edges even maybe the leaves will get a little limp and then you want to adjust your location a little bit so that's nice that's the big mother isn't she pretty when they're young the leaves are more upright as they get older the rosette opens up and the leaves come out that would make a beautiful house plant or a plant it outside all mine are outside so you've got all kind of options. Anything that you want to find to plant your little plants in, it works. Because they are so easy. And I'm going to share something with you after a while. Uh, where I put some in a strawberry planter that really didn't work. Alright, what I have here is a tribal oak planter. We just got it at the dollar store. So I'm going to go through... Well, this one I want to put in a pot by itself because of that baby. Nice root system. If you want to, you can just break some of that little bit of the root system off to neaten it up. Nice little rhizome. This is just some all-purpose, well-draining soil. Make sure that you have a well-draining soil. They get water root very easy and they don't like to have their feet wet. And what I'm going to do is come in and build that up just a little bit more. There. That way it's sitting up a little higher and when it starts opening up it will be gorgeous. Tuck it in well. Make sure the roots and the rhizomes are covered. kind of cloudy today. We aren't supposed to be getting any rain for over the next week. Now if I wanted to, I could come in here and pop these little leaves off. Since it does grow from the rhizome, it's going to start putting out new leaves, or it goes from the uh, center of the rosette rather. It, it will put out new leaves and fill all that in for me. Nice. Make sure your roots are covered and your rhizome is covered. Now you can propagate these through leaves. And leaves work, especially if you're limited in the number of the sands that you have. Say you have a rare sands of area and you only have one of them. You can put it in a pot and go ahead and let it produce pups. But if you want something a little faster, then what you can do is take one of the leaves off and root the leaf out and get several cuttings out of it. So that's it. Now I can come back and put 
one right in the middle. Let's see. I think that one will work. No, that's the one with the pup. And I don't want to put the big mother plant in. So we'll put this one in. In fact, I'm going to take that bigger one out. I'm going to put the little one in. And this is something you can just play with. It's your plant. <laughs> it's your garden. And I'll put the bigger one in the middle. Nice. I'll probably come back, backfill a little bit more soil. Now, lends itself fantastic to planters, really. Or put it in single pots. And I have actually grown mine in the large plastic recycled drink cups. They aren't choosy. They're very hardy plants. If you forget to plant one, Chances are, if it's laying in the shade, it's going to last for a little while and you can go out and replant it. If they ship, all you have to do is wrap a little wet paper towel or something around it, put it in a baggie, and they ship very, very well. If you have some you want to share with a friend, just wrap a little damp paper towel around it, and that's it. That's all you have to do. Nice. Now I can come back, I can put gravel, I can put rocks, I can put mulch, I can put uh, some moss in here, or you can just leave it plain. Put a little leaf litter in there, whatever you want to do, it's up to you, it's your plants. And it's not going to take long for these to go ahead and burst out. That easy. These do very well in terracotta plants and they're very pretty. And you know the big round terracotta dish plants? These look great in that. And you can let them go ahead and bunch out in your planters and they're fine. Even a little pot like this would work. Would make a really nice planter. Just make sure you have good drainage holes. So I'm going to come back, take one of the green pots out, and put the mother plant back in it. Snug her in really, really well. Isn't that pretty? Ooh, got some sun coming through the trees now. Look at all that vibrant variegation in there. Isn't that pretty? This is one of the reasons they make such fantastic house plants. They thrive on neglect. <laughs> so, Give them a little food once in a while, a little TLC once in a while. That's all you need to do. I'm not going to put these back out into the bright sunlight. I'm going to give them a few days to rest since they've been through, let's see, I'm going to use that pot. Since they've been through some uh, trauma here, some stress of being cut away from their mom, I'm going to give them a few days to rest. I'll water them just a little bit because we haven't had any rain and this soil is really dry. Now if you've got one like this that has the little baby, just snug it in. If your pup is even smaller, if it's just breaking off the rhizome, you can go ahead and cover it up. It's going to find its way up, but there. Now that gives that one some room. And I could have put it in a larger pot if I wanted to. So that's really nice. And in just a few moments, we have all these great plants. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There was eight plants. Well, and nine if we count the little baby. Nine
nine plants in those two little six inch pots. So that's pretty good. All from two mothers. This was a mother and this was the mother. Nice. So easy to take care of. House plants or outside. Dish gardens, rock gardens, anything you want to put them in. Pretty decorator pots. Little uh, whatnot pots. Anything you have, just make sure you have good drainage holes. That's their big requirement. They aren't fussy about the soil as long as it's well draining. They aren't fussy about where they're at as long as they don't have too many hours in really, really hot, direct sun. They're absolutely a joy to grow because they are so easy, so hardy. All right, one more thing to show you. I wanted to go ahead and show you this. Uh, although the bird's nest sands lends itself extremely well to just about any container, any pot, any type of planting that you want to do. I think this does not work. I had this very old strawberry pot and I thought, oh, I'll stick some Sansevierias in the hole and that will be really nice. Well, when I first did it, it was pretty. I overwintered it under a tree and it's been sitting under a tree. You can see the leaves and the pollen from the oak tree. The problem is now, it grew so well and it is so tight in there, I can't get them out. And it's extremely heavy. So this is something I wouldn't necessarily suggest to do. But I do want to go in now and see if I can tease these out without tearing them apart. Wow. <clears throat> okay. And then I'll plant them all out, <coughs> excuse me, into their own little pot. We've got some bug bites, and this was sitting just kind of thrown up underneath a tree and it had a lots of other plants and, and pots all around it. Not good air circulation. And that's about the size that I originally put it in here. So it didn't grow. And of course, since it was so crowded with other plants, uh, lots of the leaves are broken. Ouch. <sighs> okay. Let's see what we... See, it's trying to grow up in the pot. I don't know if I can tease that out. And that's what happens when they don't get any sunlight. They don't have any chlorophyll. I mean, I could plant this out and it still might go ahead and make it. The genes are there for it to produce chlorophyll, but that's what happened. It, there wasn't any room, so it started growing on the inside of the pot. So these are pretty well beat up. So no, I would not do this again. Again, you want to give them room. And being kind of scrunched together with everything. Oh, that one's got one going up in the center too. Let me see if I can get it out. Wow. This is why you don't want to do this. Okay. Yeah, see the new one tried to grow up through the center. But this is a perfect little plant. I can plant this out and it will be fine. Now the major job is to get these out and try to save as many of them as I possibly can. I think I'm going to try to lay it down first and grab a handful. There we go. It is going to break some of the leaves, but there's no way to get it out without it. Wow. Let me 
So if you are going to plant it in any particular type of plot, pot, make sure you have a recovery plan in place <laughs> that you will be able to move them later if you want to. Little pups coming. So that one I'm going to take apart. So now we have a nice little plant, got a little pup growing. This one looks a little sad, but it should still make it. Look at that long rhizome. Some of these are nice size. Let's see if I can twist them apart. That is a nice size plant. It's about, if you count the rhizome, about nine inches. I don't see any evident bug bites or disease. Really pretty. Now this one, it did not fare quite as well. I'm just taking off all these bottom leaves. Again, they grow from the center of the rosette. And if you are propagating from leaves, you want nice healthy leaves. So that one will do fine. Let's see what this one looks like. Isn't that pretty? Does have some bug damage. I am going to go ahead and take that leaf off and just leave these. So it will go ahead, flush back out and be fine. These are new little ones. It just didn't have enough room in there for them to go ahead and become a pretty plant. But they do now. This one I'm not going to try to save. This one I can pull these outer leaves off. Now I have never had problems with bugs other than an occasional bite here or there, except in this pot. When they are planted free and have room, have air circulation, I've never had any bug problems, but all crowded in this area, going through winter, yes, as you can see, there was bug problems. But, you know, you try, you learn. So that's a nice little plant. It's going to do fine. These are really eaten up. Now, if I only had a few, I would try my best to save these. And I might save them. But some of them are pretty well past saving. So in that little pot I had, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. About twenty plants were crowded in that one little pot. Not a good thing. And you could see the difference. All the uh, bird's nests that I had just previously up-potted. I think I had one bug bite on all of them. But this was way too crowded. It was pushed up underneath an area where it didn't get airflow, didn't get light. And the bugs were quite happy. So consider that when you are selecting your containers if you're going to grow them outside. All right, I've got to go and get these finished till we speak again. Have a fantastic day.